Today on Between the Lines, a very special episode. John O'Donoghue was a past guest on this show, and his appearance continues to be one of the most requested. He passed away recently, just as his newest book, To Bless the Space Between Us, was published. John was one of the most deeply spiritual men I've been blessed to meet, and that spirit was felt by all who had the privilege of knowing him. One of those blessed was the very talented actor Mike Farrell, who many know from his eight years on the hit series MASH. Mike so graciously accepted my invitation to talk about John's newest book of blessings that I'm certain will be of comfort to all who read it. I'm a writer today because I was a reader when I was 11 years old. And it was... You do, need, need, you do not need to prove your state of happiness to anybody. Most of these speeches were as much as a month in preparation. The characters, the heroes in this book are seekers of truth. In, in a story that, that involves a lot of corruption. You don't get a chance to really talk about what's real. And that is the first thing to do. Mike, I want to welcome you to the show. The viewers already know this is something very different for me. We're going to be talking about uh, an author who was a guest on Between the Lines and who was a friend of yours, and you so graciously said, you'll come on to discuss John O'Donoghue's book with, of blessings with us. And A, I want to just thank you right from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, sir. Well, you're welcome, Barry. It's, a, it's such a loss, and it's such a sense of um, wonder that's associated with John's passing because he was so vital and so incredibly giving, so generous with himself that I find myself struggling, as we were talking about uh, before the show, uh, to understand. But I find so much in his writing <laughs> that gives me comfort, and uh, it's like he continues to be gifting me. Well, I, I've got the exact same feeling, and that's why when I found out and I said to his publicist, you don't worry, I'm going to still spread these words. Mm -hmm. I was sharing with you how just over the last week, I've used his blessings for two people mm. who just wrote me back saying how it changed and affected, it didn't change their life as much as affected yeah. it right at that moment. And we said about his passing, I, when I wrote his mom, I just, as I told you earlier, said he obviously has a larger role to play and maybe yeah. this is it now as we discuss together. And, and what we're going to do so the viewers know is we're both going to be sharing, mm -hmm. not so much reading between the lines of what John wrote, but sharing what it means to both of us. And I actually want to start with, with your own book. I want to give it a plug oh, because we're not going to get a chance to discuss it today, <laughs> but hopefully you'll come so back. Good. But it is called Just Call Me Mike. And in it, you use an opening in your introduction, which you must have written just prior to John's passing. Yes. And I want to share it with the viewers, and that's how we'll begin our conversation. And that is, you wrote, the duty of privilege is absolute integrity. That is what John O'Donoghue taught you and wrote you. And that's how you opened up your book in the yes. 2008 introduction. Yes. You know, uh, John and I met uh, in association with a refugee aid organization with which we were both working. and. Uh, uh, I am a great uh, um, uh, stealer of quotes. <laughs> I, want, I listen to people, and when you find somebody, you know, who comes up with wonderful lines and wonderful thoughts, I just kind of write them down. Well, when I first heard John speak, I was ecstatic, and yet I, I was finding, <laughs> I was trying to find everything I could <laughs> to write down this man's words. So it was a uh, it, it was a great gift that we became friends, and uh, he visited our home, we visited his home in Ireland. Uh, uh, so that the, the sense that I have of life and the sense that I have of the appreciation of life has been so enhanced by simply knowing John and hearing him. Um, and one of the things he said in that first encounter he talked about privilege, and he talked about poverty, and he talked about the lives we live, we are, we are uh, quite extraordinarily gifted by. And then he said, the duty of privilege is absolute integrity. And I thought, yes, yes, of course, absolutely. We who are so privileged have this responsibility to be in, 
you know, people of integrity. Um, what a lesson. Well, and that's why we're going to be swapping blessings <laughs> to each other. I mean, yeah. We're swapping blessings not to each other, but in a sense, that is what John wants us to do in of his course. book of blessings. Of he, he looks at this, and, and so people know this is, it's not a, well, it's very religious, it's very spiritual, but it is not a religion Correct. or particular practice of spirituality. In fact, God is not mentioned, if any, but maybe one time in it. These are not blessings to or from God. These are blessings for us humans to give to each other. Mm -hmm. To And when we do, as he says, we are not really just giving a blessing, but something happens to us when we do that. Indeed. You know, you, you made a good point. He said in the book uh, that he didn't ever use the word God because he said the, w the word for him has such extraordinary magnitude that it can't be followed by other words. <laughs> he, wouldn't, he wouldn't deign to, to use that concept and then put his paltry words, well, this is a man for whom words were like gems. They, he, as you know from talking to him, he could speak in a way that mined the meaning of words. The, the old Irish brogue didn't hurt. Oh. <laughs> But he had a way to turn phrases and invent concepts and bring new meaning to words that made me want to scream and laugh and weep all at the same time. You know what I want to do? I want to roll in a piece of, of John's words now because when he first came on the show, the first thing I asked him, and it's two things we're going to end up talking about, he uses the word between. And I uh, said to him, yes. Boy, John, what a, a perfect show, because that's what we're about, between this. And when I, and I wrote, uh, when I saw the new book coming out, To Bless the Space Between Us, mm. I, I want the viewers to just see what John thinks about between this. And then when we come back, I'm going to ask you to do the same. Great. This is the first time I'm going to really get a chance to start the show with almost the title of my own show. My show is Between the Lines, and I couldn't help but when I read this book over and over, the word between came up. Between the web of betweenness, between the world of between, betweenness needs to be invoked. Betweenness is a very interesting concept that this book is about. All those things that lie between the things we are not so obviously aware of. Absolutely. That's, uh, as a matter of fact, that's the heart of the book. And I always think that's a wonderful metaphor for the imagination, that there are huge adjacencies and presences around every life that we can't see with the eye, but that we can viscerally and vitally connect with with the imagination. And I think that's the whole region, that threshold of betweenness, because there's a threshold that runs through everything, like between light and dark, between masculine and feminine, divine and human, chaos and order. And the magic of the imagination, and that's where beauty emerges from, is the navigation and the excavation of that threshold of betweenness. Mike, as, as we just saw John talk about betweenness, and throughout the book, again, he is so interested in two things, what he calls thresholds mm -hmm. and betweenness. And even a threshold, how does he describe it? I'll, I'll find it a little bit later, but I want you to get that same sense that those two words of crossing through a threshold and everything that lies between it are sometimes, if not all the time, more important than the visible world, yeah. as John would say. Yeah. John, John talked about um, the fact that we have moved away from ritual in many ways in this society, in modern society. And the thing, he, he was not opposed to moving away from ritual, but that the thing that was lost, he felt, was the demarcation of these transitions, these what he calls thresholds and the notion that as you move from one to the other, it is, um, it is a new beginning. And that these need to be, or can and he thought, I think, should be marked by these blessings. So for him, uh, the threshold was a new birth in a way. Every, every graduation in our lives, whether it be in time or in a new relationship or in awakening or in passing, everything was uh, to him a new beginning and, and, and something that can and should be demarked by these blessings. You know, I, I, I joked with you earlier, I said this should, this should be made into a little pocket-sized book that you can just <laughs> yes. carry around with you I because agree. you can't imagine how often you're going to be able to pull these out, 
Yep. You're going to be able to literally regenerate yourself as you cross the threshold to yes. a new beginning, and especially those in your life, your loved ones, your workers. Mm -hmm. Everyone suffers these passings of thresholds of all sorts of new beginnings. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to share a blessing with you from his beginnings, if that's okay. Sure. And this is called a morning offering. May I have the courage today to live the life that I would love, to postpone my dream no longer, but do at last what I came here for, and waste my heart on fear no more. Mm -hmm. You wake up every morning and you say that morning <laughs> offer. <laughs> You're laughing, right. but you know, you, you, oh. you, it, it hits it to the core. Of course, waste my heart on fear no more. Well, my dear, <laughs> what more could you want than to, be le to, to, to relieve yourself of fear, to waste your heart of fear no more? Can I just say, uh, it, again, in John's words, uh, about blessings. He says, it would be infinitely lonely to live in a world without blessing. The word blessing evokes a sense of warmth and protection. It suggests that no life is alone or unreachable. No life is alone or unreachable. Each life is clothed in moments of spirit, I'm sorry, raiment of spirit that secretly links it to everything else. Though suffering and chaos befall us, they can never quench that inner light of providence. This is going to be too much of a blast, Mike. We're going to have dueling <laughs> blessings. I love this because I wanted to hit off of that as you were saying it. He even says that the blessing is, uh, um, I'll use his words again. We, mm. I don't even, why do anything but that That's at right. this point? To believe in blessing is to believe that our being here, our very present mm. in the world mm. itself is the first gift, the primal blessing. Yes. That's what he wants us to really feel right off the bat is no, we're here for a purpose, right. and we are right. blessed to be here and should bless the fact that we are here. Indeed. Uh, we, you know, I, I talk a lot to people about um, the fundamental questions to me. Who are we? Who am I? What am I? What's my purpose in this life? And what am I, what am I doing about it? This book is full of that, uh, not only going to the next step, it's to acknowledge who we are and what we are. It's to give purpose to who we are and to bless who we are and say, you are not alone. You are not um, uh, meaningless. There is in all of us some value, and this value and this grace and this beauty should be recognized and blessed. This is what I think made it so unique. He's so patient. He understands that, how difficult that is, and even within the blessings for desires, the last one, I believe it's the last one or the second to the last one, under desires mm. is for longing. Yes. And what is a longing but somewhat of an unfulfilled desire, am I correct? <laughs> you're you're no, longing indeed. for it and he wants to bless even yes. the longing. And let me, yes. let me, let me share that one with, with the viewers. May you have the wisdom to enter generously into your own unease, mm. to discover the new direction your longing wants you to take. So he's even aware that a desire left unfulfilled can cause a stress amongst us, can mm -hmm. cause an unhappiness, and mm -hmm. he wants to even bless that unease. He wants us to feel comfortable with even the difficulties that some of the choices might bring us. Just, just to respond to that. Go ahead, do me, Mike, <laughs> do me. <laughs> well, that very thing, he says, for absence, the blessing of absence. He says in the first, first line, may you know that absence is alive with hidden presence, that nothing is ever lost or forgotten. He himself is testament Absolutely to that. that is how Absolutely I that. feel. Uh, you this, know, go ahead, Mike, when he, was on, when he was on your show, he, you, he talked about passing. Uh, much of what he talks about in his, in his work, uh, in these uh, blessings, in his other books, is an acknowledgement of death as a passage, death as another threshold. Um, but one of the things he said was that in Celtic lore, the, um, the, uh, de the, the, our dead, those, our ancestors who have passed, are our nearest neighbors. <laughs> and I think of that all the time, and I think, John, 
I, I, it thrills me to know that you're here. Well, you, oh, and not only that, but are we not even literally feeling him more than when he was physically yes. here? You can literally see that. I've noticed that my wife and I joke constantly about my own mother's passing, which was yes. years ago. And when she was alive, my wife and I didn't speak about my mother. She was alive. She sure. was there. We didn't think about it. Yeah. Not a day goes by when not only am I thinking of her as the person, but of her as the spirit, what she left us. We're so John, definitely, he was so attuned to that, and he bragged about seeing joyful deaths. He oh, yes. loved, yeah. in fact, it was one of his greatest things. Yeah, yeah, when he was a priest in particular, he yes. said helping people move on in that passage was, uh, was a wonderful thing. I also love the story he told when, uh, again, to you, <laughs> I'm repeating things you already no, know. No, that's okay. Sorry. About if I could interview a, a, a child in the embryo in, in, the, in the uterus, and he talked about the stages. He would say, Now, this is what's going to happen, and then this, and he goes through these seven stages. He said, Which, of course, in this child's mind is death. I'm dying. And he said, And it is, of course, as we know, the opening to life. So that the idea of death then should be perceived as perhaps the opening to a new experience. This is one that I shared just yesterday with an author mm. who is, I, I told you earlier, yes. suffering from an illness. And this is for a friend who is ill. May you find the wisdom to listen to your illness. Ask why it came, why it chose your friendship, where it wants to take you, what it wants you to know, what quality of space it wants to create in you, what you need to learn to become more fully yourself that your presence may shine in the world. So he looks at every threshold, every passing. You've got a serious illness, look mm -hmm. at it. And, and as again, what a friend can do is bless a friend yes. that they see, yes. you become aware that this illness could be shedding mm -hmm. a light for mm -hmm. you. It doesn't have to be a passing light. It's a threshold though, you're Absolutely. gonna have to get through. Absolutely. And and. and not in a sense of passing an illness, but in a sense of someone visited with a tragedy. You know, in our society particularly, we have this kind of sense of distance from people of, who do wrong. And a difficulty in dealing with figuring out, out how we relate to people who do wrong. Here's a blessing for the parents of one who has committed crime. <laughs> no one else can see beauty in his darkened life now. His image has closed like a shadow. When people look at him, he's become the mirror of the damage he has done. But he is yours. And you have different eyes that hold his yesterdays in pictures no one else remembers. You know, I get, I don't know, it's a cross between, I wanna cry and goosebumps I, at the I, same exactly. time. I gotta tell you, I debated between two that one and the one I'm about to read <laughs> now because I thought the greatest pain, I, in fact, I was ranking pain when I was reading that. I said, that would have been if my child committed a serious crime, yeah. but this is for the death of a child. Oh. And I thought nothing yeah. cre can create more pain than that on a parent. And I thought again, to let people hear these words could bring solace if they know of someone who, who's experienced this or maybe they have experienced it, God forbid themselves. Mm. Let the silent tears flow, and when your eyes clear, perhaps you will glimpse how your eternal child has become the unseen angel who parents your heart and persuades the moon to send new gifts ashore. Mm -hmm. He's so beautiful. He's got such blessings in um, homecomings. Yeah. And I, I need to share, this was the other one I shared with a friend oh. who was going through a terrible, terrible time about himself. Mm. And this is called to come home to yourself. May all that is unforgiven in you be released. May your fears yield their deepest tranquilities. May all that is unlived in you blossom into a future graced with love. If there's a theme running through these blessings, it's John wanting you, the individual, to feel blessed whether you're giving the blessing or receiving it. And I thought this was one that when I said this to my friend, I felt as blessed. And then he wrote me 
in a sense saying how blessed he was yeah. to receive it. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, Isn't it's, that the, it's the best thing about this. I, absolutely, it's always that sense that as the more you give, the more you get back. You know, somehow it's, it, it's a two-way uh, two process, this. And again, with caring so much of how we make it through that day, yes. I want to share one on failure. Uh -huh. Again, I, I think, because we, we sometimes feel failure way more than we probably should. So mm. I think to, to, to catch ourselves when we're doing that is important. The light that comes after rain is always fierce and clear and illuminates the face of everything. Through the transparency of rain, despite the initial darkening, this is the light that failure casts. And he was always, you've been blessed because you had the privilege of going to Kanamara, yeah. where he is, and the light he talked about yeah. in between the lines, how the light in Kanamara after the rain mm. shines mm. a little differently. And he wants us, after a failure or a feeling of disgrace or a feeling of we didn't live up to our potential, yes. as almost every mother has told <laughs> his son at one time or another, <laughs> is that cleansingness that comes after failure and how you can feel re rejuvenated. Yeah. He talks in, uh, about, and he talked about Kanamara a lot, of course, because it was the place of his, where his life was centered. And he talks about the fact that the mountains, these great, wonderful, huge rocks, are quite often, the, the, the tops are not visible because of the clouds, the mist. And he says the knowledge that there is so much beyond what you can see is what we need to internalize and understand that there is so much in life, so much in ourselves, so much in others beyond what we can see. He takes it even further, Mike, since we're dueling blessings <laughs> anyway here. He really says that it is the invisible yes. that gives birth to the visible. Yes. So the invisible is the parent, the, the mother, the father, the precursor mm. to what exists. Mm. Mm. You know, the next, uh, the next threshold, if you will, that he deals with is the heart. And he says here, the heart is where the beauty of the human spirit comes alive. Without the heart, the human would be sinister. To be able to feel is the great gift. When you feel for someone, you become united with that person in an intimate way. Your concern and compassion come alive, drawing some of the other person's world and spirit into yours. There's this interconnectedness that he continues to relate to and speak to in a way that makes it very much alive. Oh, you know, and even when he's, you know, he, uh, we have, I can't believe it. Our time is up. But we're going to keep talking for a little. <laughs> I'm going to have to edit something. I don't even know what. But we've been, we spent our 30 minutes. Oh, this God, is amazing. But we're going to keep going here for a second. He, because I need to bring two things out. The last two, callings and beyond endings. I'm first going to bring out callings because it, in your book, as I said, I did read it. And I was thinking about your son mm. who just about, I believe, I, I think you're talking about recently found his calling. Yes. And, and it says, the challenge is to find a way of life that will be in harmony with your gifts and needs. Probably, if, if one really looks at it, that could almost be the greatest blessing yes. we could have. And, it, and if I may, uh, and I hope you can find a place to use it, is John's, un, what he called his unfinished poem, which I think is everything. It's all finished. It's perfect. It is exactly what you just said. I would love to live like a river flows, carried by the surprise of its own unfolding. Michael, John ends with his book, Beyond Endings. And this is the end of our time here. I want to share these last words. While something may come to an ending on the surface of time, its presence, meaning, and effect continues to be held and integrated into the eternal. This is how spirit unfolds and deepens. And Mike, I just want to thank you so much for sharing these blessings of John O'Donoghue's with all of us today. Thank you, Barry. It's been a great privilege. Thank you. It is my much. blessing. Thank you, thank Michael. You. And thank you for joining us. My sign off today will be a little different, for I want to send a blessing from all of us mm -hmm to the dear John O'Donoghue by giving him one of his own blessings called on the death of a beloved. 
May you continue to inspire us to enter each day with a generous heart, to serve the call of courage and love until we see your beautiful face again. In that land where there is no more separation, where all tears will be wiped from our mind, and where we will never lose you again. Thank you, Michael. Mm. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. And thank you, Barry.